I have uncovered the truth behind Rembrandt's greatest works. It is not what you think it is. It all comes from a discovery that I made, a Little Cupid by Antonio Allegri di Clegio, which was part of a set of six great mythological works. A Venus Satire Cupid, a School of Love, an Io painting, a Ganymede painting, a Leader in the Swan, and a Danai painting. These six paintings are the true mystery behind Rembrandt's greatest works. Rembrandt embedded these works within his inner reimagination, and that was the genius code that all the great masters did. He deceived you all, but he didn't deceive me. And I'm going to share this with you and explain this real truth. My name is Daniel Dawson Gordon. This is my discovery. Enjoy. This is where it begins to get exciting. We're going on to a new stage now, and that is Rembrandt's group portraits. So in 1632, Rembrandt painted this anatomy of Dr. Nikolai Tulp, and we can see the date because it's dated in the background. And all the books have been correct in what they're saying about this picture, that these aren't real people, these are fictional. They've been so close to discovering the truth, but they haven't worked it out. So Rembrandt has used a collection of the famous Correggio works within this painting. As in the lead on the swan, bottom right hand corner, as usually always placed, is the leader being courted by the swan. So this chap with his hands up in the same position as we've seen so many paintings, this is leader. Below, where is the swan? Well, if you look at the muscular stripped hand with all the skin removed, there's a very peculiar look to these hands, how they're flared up. And what you see here is the cryptic message of this is the swan. So these are feathers and the wing of the swan. So this hand represents the swan courting leader. So to the left, we have the main leader in the center of the picture with the bright forehead, slightly inclined head, and where we can see the swan, well, it's partly incorporated with the neck ruff and the beard, but then above him, you have the other leader, which is when the leader has done the business and is flying away, and this swan is represented with this moustache. Now, who else do we have in this picture? In the far left of the leader and the swan, an iconic figure that we see again and again, you have the psyche with the harp who's looking straight directly at you just like this figure in this right side of the painting even the drawing on a piece of paper indicates the position of this fella but it's not just the leader it's the other famous works and we can see right next to the leader in the center of the picture is another man peering down and this man peering down is our satire our satire with both eyes on show. And who is below our satire in our Venus satire Cupid composition? Well, Venus, of course. And who is below this guy peering over? Well, the dead body shows Venus with a pointy inclined nose, eyes drawn back, even sort of the chest has a sort of resemblance of a female breast. But this below is Venus, this is satire. So directly above our Venus asleep at the top of the picture is the Venus from the School of Love. So that man is looking directly at us, so as Venus in the School of Love in the Brook and Fold painting. Below on the left, we have a lovely side profile Cupid, which is a match for this old chap in the left. So we've covered everybody but this last person which, who is next to the Cupid. And this face represents undeniably Danai. So here you can see the side by side with Danai. And this whole composition has the Danai, the leader, and the two Venuses. The four of the most important paintings. Overall, I've conclusively worked out this picture by Rembrandt, the anatomy 
of Dr. Nikolai Tolp. This has never been done before. There's more. Of course there's more. We cannot forget this painting. It would have been a very large, incredible work, just like that previous painting that I just showed you of the anatomy. But this was destroyed in a fire. And we can look through original drawings at how large a picture and many figures would have been in this work. But again, this painting is after Correggio's leader and the swan. If you look, the, if you see the brains being revealed of this figure being dissected, the ripples of the brain, this is representing leader's hair. This is leader. And then the figure next to the man being dissected represents the maid next to the leader. So we have these two figures in the central picture of Correggio's leader and the swan are these two central figures in this famous painting by Rembrandt. And this painting does include the swan. Because I believe again, you, the, what we can see is the blanket represents the swan. We move on now to an incredibly famous work which is the Syndicate of Drapers by Rembrandt. And these figures are no different to all the other paintings. It's a set system that's done throughout history, through all artists and in Rembrandt's works. And what we have is the leader and the swan translated into these, these men. It's a cryptic reimagination of the leader and the swan. So the bottom right hand corner, we have the leader, eyes in the same position, hand, and the width of the face, the wide bodied face. And this person, where is the swan depicted? So the gloves in hand depict the swan. So to the left of this figure, we have the other leader. And this is the leader who is the last of the sequence where the, le the swan has done his business and is flying away. But where do we see the swan? Well, below, the book represents the swan. And here we see a book in the wave motion of a, the wing of a swan. So then to the left of that, that figure, we have Leda herself with the largest shining face of all, center of the picture. And maybe it's the neck collar representing the wings of the swan here with the, the hanging tassels. But this person with a slightly inclined face is our shining leader. Above to the right, we have this face, which is the maid above the leader, which is the last in the representation where the swan flies away. So this is the maid in the top. Then to the left is the maid who is right next to the leader with a slightly inclined almost semi-side profile look, but you can see both eyes. And then our really famous person that we always see on the left side of any picture, looking straight at us directly, is the little psyche on the far left of the leader painting. So it's funny how we always have on the far left this person, on the far right the other, in the center the main leader. An incredibly famous painting, once again, we are changing history of. I'm so confused why no one has seen it before, but it's because nobody has studied the Correggio works as in depth as I have. 